Hi guys, welcome to the seventh episode of Eat the Blocks. Today we're going to study what is multiple inheritance in solidity. With multiple inheritance, one contract can inherit from several contracts. For the last episode, we already studied inheritance, but it was single inheritance. So in our case, it's going to be slightly more complicated. We're not going to study what is polymorphism. It's going to be the topic of the next episode. Okay, so switch to your terminal and inside your project folder, we're going to use the truffle command line to initiate our project. So as usual, it's truffle init. And once you've run this command, you should see those directories and those files. The next thing we're going to do is to launch the command to create our smart contract. So for this is truffle create contract and then the name of the contract my contract okay and then in your contract directory you should see that you have a new file okay so in this case you can see here my contract.cell so now open your text editor and open my contract.cell and you should see this code that has been created by truffle so we don't need this constructor here Okay, so we have a contract called my contract. So this is the contract that is going to inherit the other contract. So let's create two other contracts. So the first one will be contract kid one. And the second contract will be contract kid two. Okay. And after that, we're going to use the is keyword to make my contract inherit from kid1 and kid2. So we're going to say is kid1. And to make uh, my contract also inherit from kid2, we're going to use a comma here. So comma, and then I can continue to add other contracts. So for example, if I had a, a kid3 contract, I could make my contract also inherit from kid3 by just adding kid3 like this. Okay, but in our case, we just have kid1 and kid2. So next, we're going to create variable in each of those contracts. So first in kid1, we're going to create a string variable that we're going, we're going to call kid1 var. And very simply, it will just uh, contain uh, exactly the same thing. So kid one var equals kid one var, very easy. And we're going to copy this line and paste it in the kid two contract. Oops. Uh, okay, I'm just going to write it again. So kid two var equals kid two var. Okay. Uh, and then in my contract uh, here, we're going to create also another variable that we're going to call uh, my contract var and it's going to be equal to uh, my contract var very simply okay and now inside this contract we're going to create three functions to read each of those variables so the first function will be to read my contract var so function get my contract var and it's going to be a constant function meaning that it's a read-only function doesn't modify the data uh, and it's going to return a string so we need to use the keyword returns here with the s and then we're going to very simply just return my contract var uh, make sure that here, when you use this return key root, it doesn't contain an S, uh, which is different from here when you specify the return type. Okay. Uh, and we also need two other functions to return a kid1 var and kid2 var. So they're going to be very similar. So we're just going to copy this over. Okay. And here I'm going to replace this by a uh, kid one var, and here it's going to be kid two var. Okay, so this is just a little bit different uh, that in the pre previous episode, because in the previous episode, uh, what I did differently is I prefix this with the name of the contract. So here I, I did the equivalent of this kid one 
uh, .kid1 var, but actually you don't need it uh, because we inherit from this contract, so we can uh, read those variables. Okay, one last thing we need to do is to modify the name of those two functions. So here it's get kid one var, and here is get kid two var. Okay, so in our console now we need to start the truffle uh, develop command. It's going to start the local testnet. Okay, now we need to run uh, our migration. Uh, oh, well, one thing I didn't specify is that I've, I've already wrote the migration file because it's uh, exactly the same as the last episode. So you can find this uh, on the GitHub of this episode. I will put the link in the episode description. Uh, so here I type the migrate command. Okay, so now our smart contract is deployed on our local testnet, so uh, we can interact with it. Uh, so uh, as before, we will first create variable, uh, then we will use truffle abstraction. So our contract is called my contract. So uh, we can just use this variable, my contract, and we want the instance that was just deployed. And then we're gonna have a promise. And this promise uh, is going to return the instance and we're going to assign uh, this instance to our ins variable. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. Um, and we're going to execute this, okay? Uh, and now we're going to uh, call the method of our smart contract. So inst uh, first is a get my contract var. And here um, press enter, okay? And I have my contract var, okay? Uh, here, just to note, so in the previous episode, we didn't do like this. In the previous episode, when we call uh, a function of our smart contract, what we did was uh, we wrote the, the name of the function like this, then we added a uh, call like this, and then we had a promise and we console log the result of the promise. Uh, but there are uh, two simplification that we can add. So first in the truffle console, uh, every time there is an expression that return a promise, uh, it is uh, um, uh, evaluated um, uh, sorry, it is resolved for you. And so you don't need actually to do this then console log here, it will truffle, we, we do it for you. And second, um, in the case of a function call, so it is different from transaction, we don't actually need to, uh, to use this uh, call uh, syntax here, we can directly uh, call the method like this and because in solidity we added the constant keyword a truffle will know that it's a call and it's not a transaction so that, that's why we're able to do this uh oops uh, i don't know what is wrong here uh oh, okay it's because i forgot um i didn't spell correctly the name of the function anyway I, it works so now we're going to call the other functions. So uh, the other one is kid1 var. And we have kid1 var here as a string. So that's what we were expecting. And now we're gonna call the other function uh, kid2 var. And we also have kid2 var, okay. So, so far it's not very different from the previous episode, but I just wanted to show you that um, accessing variable of, uh, that are defined in an inherited contract is exactly the same uh, if you inherit from one or several contract. Okay, so now back to our text editor and we're going to add a new contract that I'm going to call a parent. So parent uh, that I will define here and Again, we will define um, a variable inside parents. So it will be parent var equals parent var. And now we're going to try to access uh, this variable inside our uh, my contract here. So let's add another method uh, and it will be get parent var and again, it's going to be a constant function that returns a string. Um, so return um, parent var. And 
my syntax highlighter tells me that there is a problem so we can see it in red so let's see undeclare undeclare in the identifier okay so basically the problem is like um this contract here parents it's absolutely not related to either uh kid one kid two or my contract so uh one way that uh we could solve this problem is for example uh, making my contract inherit from parent so we could do it like this and if i scroll down uh, now I can see that my syntax highlighter uh, removed the, the, the red line, so, uh, so now it's fine, but uh, it's not what I wanted to show you. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to have the problem again. What I want is to have one of the kids to inherit uh, from this parent. So here, for example, I will add uh, kid1 is parent. And when I do this, um, basically, it will uh, make parent enter the um, inheritance chain. Um, and because my contract inherit from my kid one, from kid one, but kid one also inherit from parents, uh, inside my contract, I can also access the variable of parent. So if I scroll down uh, and I have a look at my get parent var function here, I can see that my syntax highlighter doesn't complain about this line. So it should work. So now we're just going to uh, switch to our terminal and uh, execute this function to see that if we can access this variable. So let's do this. Uh, so first we need to uh, run the migration again because our contract has changed. So uh, this is how you, you reset. If you don't add the reset flag here, it's going to redeploy the smart contract, but it's going to redeploy the, the previous uh, version of your contract. So it's not what you want. Here, you, we also want to recompile. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so now we need to have a variable that point to our updated uh, smart contract instance. So we need to redo this operation again. Uh, so here, uh, my contract deployed and then we, we're going to call then and we're going to assign this to inst. Okay. And now we're going to call our new method. So inst and it's going to be uh, get parent var. And let's see what we have. And we have parent var. Okay, that's great. That, that's what we wanted. Okay, so back to our text editor again. So I'm going to do a little change and I'm going to make kit2 also inherit from parent. And let's see if the syntax highlighter uh, complain about anything. So let's scroll down and no, it seems to be working. So uh, why it's working and there is no problem here because we uh, inherit from parent two time. Uh, so when this happened, uh, basically only one instance of parent will be created when, when you compile this contract. So it means that this variable here, uh, parent var, uh, will just exist at one location. So when you try to access it in get parent var function here, there is absolutely no ambiguity. Okay, and just before we finish this episode, I'm going to talk about a problem that can arise. So now if I make my contract also inherit from parent here, uh, you will see that the syntax highlighter is going to complain here. So it means that there is a problem. So I'm, I'm not going to hover um, on over this line because uh, this is a challenge that I, I want you to solve for, for the next episode. So why do we have this problem? Why, why, why can't we have this? I'm going to give you a hint. It's related to what we call polymorphism and it's going to be the topic of the next episode. That's it for today. I hope that not multiple inheritance in solidity is a little bit more clear for you. Don't forget about the challenge I mentioned because it's going to lead you to the next episode which is polymorphism in solidity and it is closely related with multiple inheritance. If you like this channel, you can subscribe, you can give me a like or you can share. Thank you guys and see you next time. Bye-bye.